Welcome everybody. Welcome to Arise with Sally Goodwin on this beautiful rainy Thursday morning in Cape Town, rainy in Cape Town anyway, Thursday morning. Um, it is lovely and drizzly and gray outside which means that it will be lovely and cool today which I'm very excited about. <laughs> Good morning Candice, lovely to see you. Um, so I have to just say that welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> um, uh, my One of my sons had, uh, has, um, had a couple of friends to sleep over last night. Good morning, beautiful Bertha. Lovely to see you. So he had a couple of friends sleeping over last night. And so they are kind of sleeping in all different parts of the house, which mean that it is um, not conducive to me doing my, my live at seven o'clock in the morning in the part of the house that I normally do it in. And so I am now in a position where I have to do it in my bedroom. <laughs> so this is my bedroom. For those of you who've never been to my house and seen my bedroom before. And I know that the lighting isn't great and everything else. And it's a grey, dim day. But you know what? We just have to persevere with what we have. Because for this morning, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> I'm tiptoeing around the house earlier making coffee and all sorts of things. Because I don't want to disturb them, you know because they probably went to bed in the early hours of the morning um, after playing all games and all sorts of things. So, yeah, so it's an interesting, um, interesting, <laughs> interesting morning. <laughs> so welcome, welcome everybody to Arise with Sally Goodwin on this Thursday morning where Sally is rejoicing that it is cool and raining and beautiful <laughs> and um, for those of you who've just joined and who didn't hear what I said five minutes ago I'm filming the live this morning in my bedroom because I have um, a whole lot of well a couple of my son has a couple of friends that are sleeping over and they are scattered throughout the house so so in my bedroom, <clears throat> my dog is fast asleep next to me. I haven't moved her because it's cold and miserable outside and she's old. But if she stirs and you hear her stirring, then I might just have to get up and let her out the door. And if you hear noises that you don't normally hear, you know, in the live, the boys are just sort of outside that door. And so if they get up or, you know, go to the bathroom or whatever they do, you'll probably hear them. So... Good morning, Jen. Lovely to see you. So yes, so that's me. That's my explanations of my movements this morning. And um, so this morning, I wanted to speak about, so on Tuesday, good morning, beautiful Martha. Um, on Tuesday, we spoke about um, the, we, well, I titled my video for Tuesday, Daughters of Freedom. So on Tuesday, we spoke about that story in Luke where Jesus heals the woman who's bent over and, um, and how he says to her, woman, you are free. In, in, in some of the translations, it's as simple as that. He just says, woman, you are free. And, and I titled my video that, Daughters of Freedom. And, and then, I, I mean, Holy Spirit always gives me the messages that I that I that I bring. I I don't um, necessarily always plan them in advance. You know that I just go with whatever Holy Spirit drops in my spirit. And I was pondering on that message, the the story from Luke, and the fact. Remember, I said to you that um, Jesus said to the woman, he called her daughter of Abraham, and I I spoke about how that was such a restoration of identity for her. And it's the only time that that is, you know, and so it was Jesus actually restoring her identity. But then what, what dropped into my spirit was that Jesus was not only restoring her identity, he was also restoring her inheritance. 
because there is an inheritance due you as a daughter of Abraham, as a, you know, as a daughter of whomever, there is an inheritance that is due. And, and so he, was, he wasn't only restoring her identity, but he was also actually restoring her inheritance. And then yesterday, and um, by divine appointment, I bumped into a, a lovely lady who follows who follows my um, my channels, and and she was just she happened to mention to me how God had spoken to her about this. I'm going to read it to you now. This little piece in the book of Job, and as soon as she mentioned that to me. I thought about I thought about the story that I spoke about on Tuesday. She mentioned this piece to me in the book of Job and then the Holy Spirit reminded me of a teaching that I've done previously on the daughters of Zelophehad. And I feel as though there is there is something on this whole thing where God is just reminding his daughters of what they walk in and what is their portion. And um and so he's reminding us firstly on Tuesday he reminded us that we are free. That, that, you know, who Christ sets free is free indeed, that we are free. Women, you are free. And, and now this morning, I felt like he was speaking to me about daughters of inheritance. And speaking, and he wants to remind his daughters that there is an inheritance that is their portion. And actually that it's not, it, it didn't just start, you know, with the women's liberation movement. Um... And I've said this before that, you know, a, a women's liberation movement began when Jesus walked the earth because Jesus was the one who began with liberating women as far and as much as he possibly could. And there is, there is freedom and inheritance and identity restored in every interaction that Jesus has with women in the New Testament. So... I want to just have a look. So I, I want to have another look at the story of the daughters of Zelophehad. But I want to take it even further back and go back to this, this, these verses at the end of Job. <clears throat> I just, I find it so incredible the way, um, the way God drops things into my spirit and the way he speaks to me. And it's always different, you know. Um, it's like I'm always intentionally listening, even when I'm speaking to, you know, to, to people, um, friends or whatever the case may be. I'm always intentionally listening because there is always, there is always something that God is, is saying to me. So this beautiful lady that I chatted to yesterday, when she mentioned this, and you know how you read I mean, I've said this to all of you before, how we read the Bible. And sometimes we read stories and we read books that have been read. We've read so many times or we've heard the stories so many times that we don't actually pay enough attention to the story. Anyway, so it's right at the end of the book of Job. It is Job 42 and it is from 13, from verse 13. Verse 13, 14, and 15 in Job 42. So, I mean, um, you all know the story of Job, that God gave Satan permission to sift him and that Satan sifted him and he, he lost everything, And but he never, he never um, gave up his faith in God. He trusted in God despite all the well-meaning, um, incorrect advice that he received from, from his closest friends and despite even his wife basically saying to him, why don't you just turn your back on this God because look at what's happened, etc., etc., etc. And then we all know how God restores him in the end. And in fact, if we look at verse 12, let's go from verse 12. And it says, and the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And, and God has been speaking to me so much about, about, you know, that sometimes we seem to feel that as we get older, we become less useful or God can't use us as much or, 
you know, or there's some, we feel as though there's some age limit on, on God being able to use us or on us being able to step into our calling. And actually, there, the only limit that is on us is the limit that we place on ourselves, because God certainly doesn't place an age limit on anybody. You know, he doesn't say, okay, well, once you're 40, then you're pretty much done. If you haven't stepped into your destiny by then, you're never going to. He never says that. He constantly allows us the opportunity to move ahead and step into everything he has for us. So I just find it so, and God has been speaking to me so much about the latter days being greater than the former in my own life. Um, I know it's something that we, you know, we speak about in terms of the church and in terms of the moves of God, etc., etc. But there's really something on that for each of us as women that the latter days for women will be greater than the former in our lives as individuals and as, as, a, as a gender. <clears throat> and then verse 13 says, he had also seven sons and three daughters. He had seven sons and three daughters. Now, the very interesting thing is that in this book of Job, those three daughters are named and the seven sons aren't which is just the most incredible thing because in the Bible, as we all know, traditionally, it isn't like that. Every now and again, a woman's name is kind of thrown into a story. But in this instance, specifically, the three daughters are named and not the seven sons. And it says, verse 14, and he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Karen Hapuch. And in all the land, there were no women so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. I want us to pay attention to all of that. Good morning, Jen. Lovely to see you. I want us to pay attention to all of that. So, so Job 42, verse 12, firstly, God says that the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. So everything Job went through, all that he lost, he, his latter days were actually blessed more than his beginnings. He had seven sons and three daughters, but the seven sons are not named. There is no reference to them at all, but the three daughters are named. And then it says that in all the land, there were no women as fair as the daughters of Job and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. And before we look a little bit further at the names of Job's daughters and we go on to just have a brief look at the daughters of Salafahad, I want us to just pay attention to, you know, you know, you do know, I'm sure, that the Bible, the books in the Bible are not in chronological sequence. You know, they're not written in chronological sequence. Some of them are. Some of them follow one after the other. Um, good morning, amazing Adele. No problem at all. Enjoy the, enjoy the replay. Bless you. Um, so they, they are, some of them follow on, you know, in chronological sequence. But generally, the books of the Bible, a lot of them, they're grouped together in certain um, genres, but they're not, they don't necessarily follow chronologically. Okay. So, oh, also just while I'm thinking about it, ladies, um, and you know me, I hate doing this, but if you could just like and share and, um, yeah, j just, um, like and share and do whatever it is that one does on social media. I, I have to tell you just quickly to digress slightly is that every time you ladies, you know, share and and Jenny, you're just amazing at that, my friend. Um, I get more. I mean, I know that that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> you know, I know that that's why we like and share is so that people get more followers and more subscribers and things. But it just amazes me. It just amazes me how it works, you know. And just recently, God has been so kind to me um, because... You know, when you go through stages where you're just not sure that you're doing what God has called you to do, or you're kind of trying to find direction and, um, you know, we've, we have to move um, in, in a couple of months' time and we're just kind of seeking the Lord for direction. And then you question yourself and the enemy creeps in and he just whispers doubts in your ear, you know. And, the, and God is just so kind because the, the messages and the email, I just received the most beautiful email from a, a lady in, I'm, I'm probably not going to get this right, but... I think it was West Virginia, um, West Virginia, America, who stumbled upon my YouTube channel and just 
wrote just such a beautiful testimony of how it had impacted her and I don't know it's just those things are just those things blow me away they they, they blow me away they just they just God is kind when he does that when people message me and they say you know oh, wow I've just found this video of yours and somebody else messaged and said to me and um, that she was searching for things in the month of Adar and she found my videos and now she wants to go and watch all of them and, and you know and it's because as I keep saying it's not about me it's about Jesus and I just um I just am so humbled <laughs> but God is so kind to me the way he just encourages me or uses people to encourage me so if you feel God is using you to encourage anybody in any way to message someone or email them or reach out to them, don't think to yourself, oh, no, that must just be me or this person would never want to hear from me. Don't, because honestly, it doesn't matter who you are to receive that message that says like, wow, this meant so much to me or this message meant so much to me. It just actually, it just, it just, it blows a person away. It really does. It blows me away every single time. I never, I never get, yeah. Anyway, let me move on. So, so the Bible was not written in chronological order. Um, there, as I've said, there are books that follow chronologically after each other in within a certain genre. But as you know, um, and the, the New Testament is chronological, but the Old Testament wasn't written in chronological order. And so, the Book of Job is actually the oldest book. Um, and in terms of when Job lived, so Job lived before the um, before God gave the law and the commandments, the Torah. Before all of that, Job lived. Before all of that, so you you wonder in those days, you wonder, you know, how how did they know God? You know, they had no book to study, no no evangelists um, banging on their door telling them about the Bible. Um, Job just knew God and I just find that so fascinating. So Job is an ancient book written before the, the law and the, and the commandments and the Torah and all of that. And the reason why I'm making that such a point is because God, when I read that that verse about the the the, their father, Job, gave his daughters their inheritance among their brothers. So Job gave his daughters an inheritance among their brothers. There was nothing there where he was like, oh, only my sons will inherit. His daughters were going to inherit. He was so for his daughters that they're the only ones who are named in this chapter 42 of Job. It's, it, there's, a, there's a message there and, and the message for me that just fell deep into my spirit was just that God didn't invent patriarchy. God did not, the, the spirit of patriarchy or the system of patriarchy that so many women live under today, that was not from God. Because way back when, before God even gave the Torah to the Israelites, you know, before all of that happened was a man who loved God, who had faith in God, who stood stood firm in his faith for God despite all the things that happened to him and in and in his goings and his doings gave his daughters inheritance amongst his sons and and then obviously it all kind of you know slid and and the sons started to be the only ones that got inheritance and then we get to numbers and 27 i think it is and then we'll look at it now in numbers 27 and you get the daughters of zelophehad and you get them standing up and fighting for their inheritance and 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 then again the women get inheritance and then again as time goes on and as Jewish history continues the women lose that inheritance again and they again become disinherited and then jesus comes and Jesus just restores identity, restores freedom, and restores inheritance to women just in his interactions with them. And then he says to one bent over woman in, in the temple one day, and he, call, he speaks to her and he calls her a daughter of Abraham. And with that is an instant restoration of her inheritance as a daughter of Abraham, an inheritance that had been taken from her. And I just, I know that as women, we have generational inheritances 
that our mothers and our grandmothers were unable to claim because of the spirits of patriarchy and misogyny, because of the inequality between male and female, because of the way the world was, the way the church still is in many spaces, they were unable to claim those inheritances. And those inheritances are waiting for us for us as a generation, for the next generation to pick them up and walk in them. And as women, we have a responsibility to ask the Lord what generational inheritances, specifically from our mother's side of the family, but it can be from our father's side of the family, but I'm just thinking of the, the female line right now, what generational inheritances do, is, are lying dormant in our, in our generational line that we get to pick up and walk, walk in now? What battles do we need to fight? I was actually praying yesterday for my, for my sons and I was just thanking the Lord for the battles my mother fought that I haven't had to fight and the battles that I fight so that my sons and my future daughter-in-laws don't have to fight them, daughters-in-law, don't have to fight them. And, and this is what we're doing. If, if we, we have a responsibility to pick up the inheritances that are lying there, it could be a spiritual inheritance, it could be a financial inheritance, it could be a physical inheritance of some sort. There is something for each one of us that we need to take forward so that the next generation don't have to fight for it. So I want to just have a look at the, the names of Job's daughters. I mean, my word. Okay, so Job had three daughters, right? The first was Jemima, the second was Keziah, and the third was Karen Hapuch. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And now, just a note on this. If you went now and you just Googled those names, you might come up with something that I don't say here. And so you must just always remember that particularly um, Hebrew names or names that actually even possibly, pardon me, predated um, the Hebrew language, you know, as such. Uh, there is some, there is often a, different people translate them differently. But, you know, because remember that there were language, look, a lot of, a lot of um, people or scholars who study languages say that Hebrew is the oldest language, uh, but, but even Hebrew, ancient Hebrew was written in pictographs and then it became biblical or modern Hebrew and then it became, so, so you know, there are things that, are, that have been lost in translation just because the language was, was written differently back then. So when I go and have a look into the meanings of names and things, I, I research more on the Jewish historical side of things rather than just your average kind of um you know boy names girl names baby book that we all read before we have children and um there's a brilliant site that um that jenny introduced me to the uh called my kairos my kairos i think that's it um and they have incredible meanings for names there but then there are also the the jewish the more jewish sites that i tend to look at to look at the meanings of the names and they go back to the jewish word and then they look at the roots and they look at where else it was used and they bring it out of that so just in case because i don't want you to google it and be like oh but jemima doesn't mean that you know uh, so yeah as you there could be other meanings these are the meanings that i find just based on the spaces that i research in because i'm trying to go back to the original Hebrew or Aramaic or whatever the language was at the time. So Jemima, Jemima means, can mean dove, which is just beautiful because immediately I read that I thought I was just saying on Tuesday, we need to be gentle as doves and wise as serpents, right? As women. So Jemima means dove. dove. It also means lady daylight. Lady daylight. I just, I don't know about you, but I think that that is the most magnificent name meaning. If you think of when Job lived, like he lived like right near the beginning. 
you know, of all things kind of that kind of thing. And and I mean, you know, and God speaks to Job about, you know, how he created things. And then he calls his first daughter a name that means dove, which always then reminds us of, reminds us of the Holy Spirit. And that also means Lady Daylight, which to me is for women just speaks of, you know, us being light in the darkness, us bringing the daylight, the light into situations. His second daughter, her name was Keziah. And if you take that, that name back, Keziah, listen to this. It means it is done. The same as, the same as it says in the New Testament um, when, when Jesus, in John I think it is, when Jesus is crucified and he says it is finished or it is done. That's what, that, that's what the name Keziah means. It is done. Already, back then, this was already testifying to the Messiah that was coming and the fact that, that it is done. Already it is done. And then his third daughter, Karen Hapuch, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, means splendor of color. Splendor of color. Isn't that just beautiful. Doesn't that just describe women? Daylight, dove, splendor of color, you know, all of those things. If I think splendor of color, I always think of vibrant, vivid, you know, um, primary colors, you know, rainbow colors, um, you know, the beautiful, vivid colors of flowers and things like that. If I think of splendor of color, and isn't that just how, what God's daughters should look like? how God's daughters should be, just this, this splendor of color. So not only do we bring daylight into the world, not only do we bring the spirit into the world, but we bring color. We, we color, we, we, <laughs> we colorize a dull and gray world. We bring color. And I love color. My previous house, um, when when we lived in a house that we owned, I um, I had a red wall. I had a um, I had I painted huge big yellow sunflowers on one wall. I just and in in the houses that I've lived in before, I literally painted every room a different color because I love color. I I dress in bright colors. I tend to I tend to favor. Uh, bright colors and I love that I love color and women bring color into the world my boys were always like um mom you know it all needs to be grays and neutral and my eldest son has just bought his first little studio apartment and I can see he's going with all white you know and neutral <laughs> and I'm just like put some color on those walls dude but that's what women do isn't that what we bring into the world it's just we bring color we bring light we bring the spirit and then w w women we are we are God's declaration that it is done Women, you are free. You are daughters of freedom. You are daughters of inheritance. You have a restored identity. It is done. It is done. So I just want you to understand that from we can see from the book of Job that the patriarchal laws and, and things that the Israelites walked in and that the world walked more and more and more in as, as the world got older and older were not there right from the beginning. They were not God's laws from the beginning. You, because Job, otherwise Job would never have given his daughters inheritance amongst his sons. He would have just given his sons in the inheritance as was the case going further on. So right from then, right from Job, right from Job, his daughters inherited. And so then we let's move on and have a very quick look because I have done, I think, two different teachings on the daughters of Zelophehad, and I don't want to belabor the point. <laughs> um, but, but if you go to Numbers chapter 27 and you use you read the story of, um, you know, the Israelites are being numbered, basically, 
and you know the the whole sort of a whole lot of the laws are being written out and a whole lot of the things are happening and basically Moses is the person who hears all their grievances if anyone has an issue then you know Moses hears all their grievances and but but there is a law in the land that the, the that the inheritances go to the to the sons and then you know they have this law of you know, if, if a woman is married to the older son and the older son dies, then she marries the next brother so that um, the, the inheritance of the older son doesn't fall away. And there's all of these things that can happen between daughters and, and sons and in-laws and all of that kind of thing to maintain the inheritance of the family so that the family don't lose their inheritance. But now here comes Salafahad and he has no sons. He only has five daughters. So effectively, what would happen with his um, land is it would go to, if he had a brother or something like that, it would go and he, his name, his lineage, his whatever would be lost because he only had five daughters. But these five daughters, and I don't have time to go into the meanings of all the names of the five daughters, but, but maybe, maybe next week we'll just go over that quickly uh, because I think... I think next week I'm just going to speak next Tuesday. We're going to speak on, I am just feel God prompting me in my spirit identity, a little bit of identity. We all need a reminder of that every now and again. So I feel as though it's like daughters of freedom, daughters of inheritance, daughters of identity. That there's a, a little theme that God is, is working through with me at the moment and with you ladies at the moment. So, so the, the daughters of Zalathahad come and they stand before Moses. Now I understand this. They stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the leaders, and all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. These five girls, in a, in a, in a society or in a cultural space where women were not hugely valued, they were not, didn't have, um, you know, voices particularly, they, they weren't, these five ladies or girls, however old they were when Zelophehad had it died, came and they stood not just before Moses, but they stood before Moses, they stood before Eleazar the priest, they stood before the leaders and all the congregation at the door of the tent of meeting. And they said, our father died in the wilderness. He was not among those who assembled together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died for his own son, as did all those who rebelled at Kadesh, and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be removed from his family because he had no son? Give to us a possession among our father's brethren. And so it says in verse 5, Moses brought their case before the Lord. And this is the Lord's answer to Moses. Receive this, ladies, each and every one of you. Put your name in this passage where it says in verse 7. So chapter 27, verse 7. The daughters of Zelophehad are justified and speak correctly. You shall surely give them an inheritance among their father's brethren, and you shall cause their father's inheritance to pass to them. And say to the Israelites, if a man dies and has no son, you shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter. And if he has no daughter, you shall give his inheritance to his brethren. So basically, with that, with that, God in causes women in Israel to be able to inherit. Those five daughters of Zelophehad, in standing up the way they did, in speaking out the way they did, they guaranteed that the Israelite women going forward would receive an inheritance. And you know, I spoke at a Women's Day event last year right of course last year august i spoke at a women's day event and the the story that god and i actually spoke on the daughters of zelophehad and it was a women's day event in kailitsha and i spoke on the daughters of zelophehad um the five daughters of zelophehad and the fact that there is an inheritance available to each and every woman and i was encouraging the women of kailitsha to claim their inheritance the same as any other place that they have an inheritance due to them, a generational inheritance, etc., 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 And then God uh, brought to my attention that because 
there were the, I correlated it with, or did I a little bit? I didn't have time to go into it too deeply, but we all know. Well, those of us who are South African and are watching from South Africa, we all know about the five women who protested against the pass laws, the Dompas, um, all of those years ago. There were five women who stood together and pro protested against the Dompas. And it was, um, I think I've got this correct, um, three, three black ladies, a colored lady and a white lady, I think. I think that. But the thing is that these five women in days, this is way before social media, way before social media, they managed to get together 20,000 women. No internet, no, no Facebook, no Instagram, no cell phones. They gathered 20,000 women to protest the pass laws, to protest the Dompas. And that law was, was, re was rescinded. The, the past laws were done away with. The Dom Pass was done away with. Five women. Five women in an, in an era where everything was against them. Everything was against them. And with no access to social media the way, he, they, the way we have today. And they changed things for, the entire, for in, an entire population within our nation. And then God just... He just took that and he took the five daughters of Zelophehad and he was like, Sally, all it takes is five women or two women or three women to stand up and say, you know what? This is not right. This is wrong. Women deserve a better inheritance than this. And you can change the world. You can change the world. If we all stood up and we all stood together, who could stand against us? If we have God at our backs and God leading us forward and God at our sides, who can stand against us? Ladies, it is time to fight for the things that women are entitled to. It is time to stand up against patriarchy, against misogyny, against domestic violence, against gender-based violence, against rape, against all of those things. It is time to stand up against sexual abuse, against abuses that are perpetrated by and within the church and covered over and, and, and glossed over and swept under the carpet. It is time to raise our voices. And we always, I think what, what happens with us is the enemy whispers in our ear that we are going to be doing it alone. But I am telling you, you are not alone. I am not alone. We are not alone if we stand together. And this isn't about my ministry or your ministry or my name in lights or your name in lights. I don't care whose name is in lights. It doesn't have to be my name. It doesn't have to be my picture. It doesn't have to be my ministry. It just needs to be Jesus. It just need, needs to be Jesus. We, we just need to be doing it because Jesus is blowing on it. Because the Holy Spirit is breathing on it. And we move ahead. If, 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 if Job's daughters could have lived in the security of the knowledge that they would never be disinherited right back before the law and the Torah and all of that. And then Zelophehad's daughters could stand up and speak out at a time where women were not encouraged to stand up and speak out. And God himself said to them, they are justified and speak correctly. And I decree and declare over every single woman watching this broadcast, you are justified. God has restored you. God has vindicated you. God has justified you. You are justified. And those five daughters changed history for a period of time. Unfortunately, it went back, but they changed history for a period of time for Israelite women. Those five women, all of those years ago, they changed history for, for women of color, for, for people of color in our nation going forward. It was the beginning of the end of, of apartheid and all of that racial discrimination. It was the beginning of the end. Five women, five women. Ladies, we are more powerful than we know. 
God has created us to be more powerful than we actually even can begin to comprehend. We don't have to hide behind men. We don't have to. It's amazing to have men in our corner. My husband is the most supportive, incredible man you have ever laid eyes on. He thinks I can do anything. He believes in me absolutely. He believes in me when I don't believe in myself, which is just amazing. But we have Jesus. We have God. If 12 men could turn the world upside down in Jesus' day, how many women have turned the world upside down since then? So many. So many we don't even know because they aren't spoken about and they aren't all written about. But it's time. It's time for us to start reading and writing the stories of women who have gone before us and paved the way. It's time for us to start celebrating women who have invented things and done things and, and changed lives and changed the world. It's time for women to be celebrated because God has said that the latter days will be far greater than the former. And that applies to his daughters. That in these latter days, his daughters are going to walk in freedom. His daughters are going to walk in their inheritance. His daughters are going to walk in their identity as spirit bringing, light bringing, splendor, color bringing, life bringing. And women who can stand up and say, it is done. It is done because Jesus did us for it. <laughs> it is done because Jesus did it for us. Jesus did it for us. We don't need the church to do it for us. We don't need the, you know, we don't, we don't need leader, leaderships and things like that to do it for us. It, it is done because Jesus did it for us. And Jesus was in the business of restoring women, restoring, redeeming, reconciling, vindicating, justifying in every interaction that he had with a woman while he walked the earth. That's what he did. That's what he did. That's what we're entitled to. So ladies, go before the Lord. Go before the Lord and ask God, what generational inheritance are you entitled to that has been laid down or put down or what gen generational inheritances were there that your mother and your grandmother or your great grand whatever couldn't walk in because of the culture of the day that they lived in or the, or the, time, the, the time that they lived in? What generational inheritances or mantles or gifts spiritually, financially, physically are there that have been laid down that we get to pick up for the next generation? For our benefit and for the next generation of women's benefit. Ask God. Claim your inheritance. Fight for your inheritance. War for your inheritance. You're entitled to it. You're daughters of inheritance. You're entitled to it. Be like the daughters of Zelophehad. Be like Job's daughters. Secure in the fact that this is your portion. Be like that, that woman in the temple whose, whose identity and inheritance was instantly restored the moment Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham. Remember those five ladies who shook South Africa and managed to get the Dompas, the past laws, rescinded. Remember the five daughters of Zelophehad and let us rise up as women taking our inheritances from what has come before and step into the spaces of injustice and unrighteousness and make a difference. Let our voices be heard. Let us stand together. And let us fight battles that, so that the next generation will not have to fight them. They will have their own, their own wars to fight. I decree and declare over you right now that between today, Thursday and next Tuesday, there is going to be something that is going to rise up inside of you. The roar of the Lion of Judah that is going to rise up inside of you. That you are going to know that God is calling you to change your, your family, your community, your church, 
your sphere, your space, whatever spiritual footprint you have, that God is calling you to change things. Now is the time, ladies. Now is the time to do this. There is an assignment, and I'm running, I've run out of time, so I'm not going to go. We'll talk about this a little bit more on Tuesday, okay? But there is an assignment against women at the moment. There is a demonic assignment against women at the moment. I know so many beautiful mothers whose daughters, from, ranging from tiny, teeny, weeny little toddlers right up to teens, early 20s, who are just under the most incredible attack from the weirdest things, the weirdest sicknesses, the weirdest mental issues. Just it's like there is an assignment against women. Why? Because the enemy knows that women are rising up. The giant is stirring. The giant is stirring. And as the giant stirs and starts to shake off its lethargy and stands up in all its glory, God's glory, as it stands up in all God's glory, there will be no going back. No going back. Now is the time. Okay, and now I have run out of time. So I decree and declare over each and every one of you that there will be a burning rising up inside of you, that you will find the generational inheritances, mantles, anointings, whatever it is that is in your that is in your um, generational line, that you will step into the battles and the wars that need to be fought now so that they do not need to be fought by the next generation, that you will know that you are not, you not only bring the spirit, but you bring light and you bring color and you bring splendor and most of all, that it is done. It is done. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for me. I'm excited for all of you. Okay, so I will see you next Tuesday. Love you so much. Bless each and every one of you. Go forth, rise up, stand in everything that God has for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you. See you Tuesday.